Welcome to the Gaudium et Spes podcast. Every other week, we bring you Catholic teachings and stories of faith from people throughout the Diocese of Pensacola, Tallahassee. This is the Gaudium et Spes podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our last episode of the calendar year of the Gaudium et Spes podcast. Chaz, can you believe we're coming up? It's the end of December now, and uh, we're getting ready to start a new year. It's just amazing. Scary. Yeah. It's, 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 I, I, every part, so much of this year is like, oh, I'm in that phase of life where a year feels like four months. Uh, it just feels like, I just started 2022. And, I know, I know. Oh, my gosh, all the projects you had, you th- you thought we're going to be complete or not finished and yeah yeah exactly i know you Breathe know deeply yes i want time to slow down and it just never seems to it just seems to speed up yeah i guess agreed but, agreed well trying to make the most of every moment i think that's the motto moving Indeed. into the next year so Indeed. speaking of moments our first line from getting its biz reflect on our last highs and lows of the, the year in the midst of the holiday season. Anyhow, if you're first joining us for maybe the first time, our, our, our podcast always starts off with a line from Gaudi Mitzpah's paragraph one, which goes, the joys and the hopes, the griefs and anxieties of the men of this age, especially those who are poor or in any way afflicted. These are the joys and the hopes, the griefs and anxieties of the followers of Christ. It's an up and down time of year. What's going on, Suzanne? It is. Well, you know, on our last episode, we had Father um, Dennis Mm O'Brien, and he talked about walking El Camino. I mean, what an incredible um, guest to have on our podcast, and I really enjoyed seeing him again. And, you know, he used to be um, our pastor at uh, St. John's, so um, it was nice to to talk to him. But other than that, you know, we're um, finishing up the Advent season here, looking forward to the birth of Christ and Christmas, my triangle with my husband's daughter and um, myself are... We're now going to become a square again for a little while. My son's coming home from college. So, yeah, really excited (laughs) about that. I know that's a strange metaphor, but uh, (laughs) I love using it, you know, and not looking forward to the middle of next year when it becomes just a straight line, just my husband and I, (laughs) because my daughter's graduating from high school and she's heading off to college herself. So, but yeah, lots to look forward to and uh, lots to, um, you know, just be thankful for in this last year. So, Mm. how about? you i love that by the way <laughs> straight straight line square triangle yes that's, that's great who's the top of the triangle suzanne well yeah, you think <laughs> this one right here yes standing and, and commanding <laughs> as she was born to do um oh gosh what's going on um yeah it is the holiday season it's been a great few weeks for uh we had Christmas play with my oldest daughter, Lucia, just doing a little short skit, which was fun to see her up on stage at the school. Um, some beautiful liturgies this time of year. Um, but yeah, I, I, I would be remiss with that saying. We get a two for one in one week birthday package for my mm. sons. My uh, oldest boy, John Paul, he turned seven on December 15th. And then little boy Gabriel, our little chubster, uh, turn in <laughs> one uh, Tuesday, December 19th. So a lot of joy around our household, a lot of uh, smash cake for our one year old. He gets his first real oh, taste yeah. of sweets and uh, just. And, the boy loves food, so it's uh, <laughs> it's quite a sight, anyhow. So yeah, just a great time of year. It's always having two birthdays right before Christmas. Not great in terms of present buying, especially when other people. By the way, if you're listening, yes, be careful when you ask for suggestions for gifts. Um, <laughs> either do a way ahead of time or like don't do it at all. because yeah. like we're we're out of ideas here, people. Mom, dad, you know, grandma, grandpa. I we're out of ideas for gifts. So. I know, and I always thought that the kids born around Christmas, my son is two weeks after Christmas, I am. they kind of get gypped, you know, because some people give them, oh, a birthday and Christmas gift together, mm-hmm. and it's like, no, 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 make them separate. So we were always very conscious of having a distinct Christmas and a distinct birthday yeah. for him. Good so. for you. Lucky children yeah. you have. Yeah. Well, guys, it is that time of year where you kind of take a, re- uh, a review um, of what's been happening, and Bishop Bill is going to do that for us uh, and take us through a spiritual practice that can be really helpful when looking upon your day, your week, your month, and especially when you're reviewing the calendar year. So stay tuned for that, and we'll see you afterward. The new year. 
Whether it is a new liturgical year or a new fiscal year or a new calendar year brings with it hope and expectation and enthusiasm. Creation exists in time. Although God and eternal life are outside of time and space, we exist on earth for a certain period of time. We are born. We live for a certain amount of time. And we have our being. And then we die. Time moves on. We just celebrated Christmas, which is the mystery of the incarnation of Jesus, the Son of God who is outside of time, co-equal with the Father, stepped into time to bring salvation to the world. He lived in a specific time period 2,000 years ago and grew up and then gave his life for the salvation of the world. Even after his death, resurrection, and ascension, he is still with us in our time, in every time, through the liturgy and in his church. The closest we come to being outside of time, the limits of time, is when we celebrate the Mass. For a brief, mysterious, awesome moment, we are caught up in the eternal banquet of heaven. It is a tiny glimpse of what awaits all of the faithful in eternity. But back to our topic, leaving the past and looking forward to the future. As we move into a new calendar year, we are in a good position to assess how well we responded to God's presence in our lives last year and to make a resolution to follow him more perfectly in the future. Now, although he didn't come up with the term, St. Ignatius of Loyola taught us the value and the beauty of the examine. Or there are, there's an examination of conscience, and most of us know that. That's what we do. Well, we, sh- we could do that every day, where we kind of just think about our mistakes, our sins. We do that especially before confession. We examine our conscience and, you know, to use official language, I guess, we accuse ourselves of sins or, you know, mis- misgivings of things that we have done wrong. And, um, and then we resolve to take those to confession and be forgiven. But he also talked about an examination of consciousness. That's not just looking at our sins for a specific period of time, but it's stopping even a couple times a day, but certainly at noon, maybe in the evening, and taking an assessment of the day, examining our, our day. And, um, and that's what I'd like to do. I want to kind of walk us through that, not just for a day, But for the whole year, last year, you know, as we walk through that year, we can examine what went well, how did I respond well to God's grace and God's invitation to know him, love him, and serve him, how did I turn away from God or my neighbor, and with all of that in mind, how can next year, this year in which we're entering now, how can that be better for me and for my brothers and sisters around me? So... Um, As I said, he wasn't the first one to come up with that term, but he really popularized that term and gave this to the church, this this, um, examine, this this, this process of examination. He showed his followers and the church at at large how to stop at various times and reflect on what had occurred up to that point. Then one was to resolve to heal past wounds where possible and resolve to do better. Actually, St. Ignatius taught that this should be done daily, as I said. And when I went on a 30-day retreat, the spiritual exercises given to us by St. Ignatius of Loyola, that's where I learned to do a daily examine. I don't do it every day, um, but when I think about it, I just I stop and I think about, let's say, the morning. How did things go this morning? And I kind of just imagine, kind of review the day. I, I've met certain people. I had some conversations. Some were really wonderful and good and life-giving, and others, ooh, I can see where... Sorry I said that, or I should have said something, or should not have done this. Um, It's just a way of walking with God through a certain amount of time, a certain period of the day. Um, But as I said, it can also be done, you know, for another period, like before something big happens, before you get married, or before you're ordained, or certain before moving on to certain phases of your life. So I would suggest that at the beginning of a new year, this would be a perfect opportunity for us to do an examination. 
So I'll walk us through the steps of the exam as outlined in Ignatius's spiritual exercises. Remember, you can do this every day, but in this episode, we will be using it to help us look back and look ahead. Now, I also must say this. If you look up the five steps of the exam, you'll find many different sites have different ways of wording these steps, you know, and kind of different emphases, but they're all basically the same. So if you look it up and you'll say, wait a minute, it says the steps are a little, they're outlined a little bit differently on this site. That's fine. Go with it. But here's, um, here's the ones that have been given to me. This is how it's been given to me. The first step is to give thanks. Put yourself in God's presence and be aware that God is with you. That's what we celebrate at Christmas, right? Emmanuel, God is with us. No matter what, no matter what we're going through in good times and bad times, we always have to remember that God is with us. So we, we begin by putting ourselves in God's presence and giving thanks to God. Spend some time simply reflecting or just resting in God. As we hear in the scriptures, especially in the Psalms, We can't pay God back for things that he has done or given to us. The only thing we can really give God is a thankful heart. Over the last year, we were so very privileged to live in God's beautiful world. We experienced heartache and difficulties to be sure, but we also got to be part of events and relationships that were beautiful, breathtaking, and completely enjoyable. Have we thanked God for the past year? The joys, the sorrows, the challenges, the lessons learned, the heartbreaks, etc. Everything is a gift from God. And this is beautifully portrayed, if you will, in the, uh, the great hymn of praise to God. In the first letter of John, chapter 3. See what love the Father has bestowed on us in letting us be called children of God. But I just love that because there the sacred author is just gushing about the love that God bestows on us. For he includes us into his family. He calls us his children. He is our Father. We are his children. We should just give thanks to God above all. Also, and this may go without saying, In this step, we should ask God to join us as we look back. He already knows everything that happened, everything you did and experienced, good and bad, and he is pleased to accompany you on this exam. Knowing that God is right there with you will help you to be merciful and patient with yourself as you look over the events of last year. So that's the first step, to give thanks, to kind of calm yourself, put yourself in God's presence, and ask God to go with you through this examination through the year. The second step, call to mind the gifts that God has given you over the course of the year. Now, of course, you won't be able to remember everything that happened throughout the course of the year. But as you look back over the months and seasons, can you become aware of the gifts that God has given you? Perhaps it was a new relationship or friendship along the way a new job or volunteer opportunity, a retreat, or just some extra time you found during the day or during the week to reflect and pray, new opportunities for growth, personally or professionally, love and forgiveness that were shown to you, being affirmed or even rewarded for a job well done, completing a challenging task, growing in your prayer life, etc., etc. Take some time with this. I would suggest you take a lot of time with this. I mean, a year is a long time to to kind of consider. But as you go through the months, perhaps, maybe that's the best way or just the four seasons, you know, kind of just ask yourself, where was God? What what what, what did God give me? What, what kind of opportunities were given to me and um, gifts? And was I aware of them? Did I thank God for them? This is your opportunity to do that. It's a time to give thanks to God. In fact, recalling the good things you did or experienced last year will no doubt move you to give God glory and thanksgiving. It also helps us to realize that everything we have is a gift from God. Even the challenges we had can and should be seen as a gift. Jesus taught us that God, like a good vine grower, prunes the branches occasionally so that they will produce good fruit. 
and in a radical way, St. Augustine said that even sin on our part, it's not good. Of course, sin is never good, but there is fruit in sin if it leads us closer to God through reconciliation. So don't be afraid and, and um, yeah, don't, don't be afraid to look back and even, you know, see those, those mistakes and those sins in the past. Call those to mind. I'm not saying you should give thanks to God for that, but give thanks for lessons learned, perhaps, and opportunities for reconciliation and growth. The third step is still, we're still kind of looking, reviewing the thing, reviewing the year. Continue to review the course of the year. And now ask yourself, how did you react or respond to those events, to what happened? Did these events or experiences lead you closer to God or farther away? Were they moments of grace for you? Where was God in the highs and lows, the good times and the bad times? While it is difficult to see God's hand at work when we're in the moment, looking back gives us the freedom to discern what God is trying to tell us. Perhaps upon looking back, you discover that you grew spiritually Or, on the other hand, maybe you feel that you are not as aware of God's presence in these actions and events as you were in previous times. Maybe you feel farther away from God because of what happened last year. Stay with your reflection. Try to see everything through God's eyes. This is not the time for judgment. That comes in the next step, actually. But for now, try to relive the past year in your mind, remembering that God is with you on this journey. Ask God to enlighten you, to show you what was important. In the fourth step, you may take some time in contrition, to be contrite. That is, since you are a human being and since all of us are sinners, you will no doubt become aware of mistakes and sins that you have committed. We have all done things, repeatedly or even recently, that we wish we could undo. And that's obviously not possible. We cannot change the past. But short of that, can we look at what happened and be sorry for them and ask God to forgive us? The Bible and our history is filled with people who sinned, sometimes horrifically. But God is merciful. God calls us to conversion. God only wants us to repent and let his grace work in us. In our faith, we extol sinners who picked themselves up with the help of God, of course, and kept going. Think of all the famous people in the Bible and in history who who led colorful lives in the past and who were converted, who were forgiven. I think of King David, for instance, handpicked by God when he was a little boy to be king of Israel, who famously sinned and God forgave him. I think of Jesus' example of the prodigal son, in the Gospels, or St. Peter himself, who denied knowing Jesus three times and was forgiven. I think of St. Augustine and his famous conversion, or St. Ignatius of Loyola, or so many people who were sinners but turned their lives around. As the saying goes, I love this, every saint has a past and every sinner has a future. As you go through this examine, you may wish to resolve to go to confession as soon as you can. Receive God's gift of reconciliation often. How awesome to hear the words of Christ through the priest, I absolve you from your sins. When we say an act of contrition, we add, I firmly resolve to change my life to sin no more and to avoid the near occasion of sin. Spend some time then, resolving to change. You may be able to bring some healing to some situations in which you may have caused hurt in the past, or you might only be able to pray for those you might have hurt or who were affected by your choices and your actions. Again, we can't change the past, but we can resolve to do things differently going forward. Which brings us to the last step, looking ahead. Ask God to help you to be aware that he will be with you in the future, just as he was in the past, just as God is with you now. 
Ask God to open your heart so that you can move with confidence, bringing the joy of the gospel into your actions and sharing it with your family and friends, your co-workers, and your neighbors. To use more modern language, visualize how you would like to be more kind, more loving, more patient with others. Think of things that are coming up and ask the Holy Spirit to complete these tasks or enter into these events with by helping you to have a loving and open heart. There are many things that can and will happen in the course of this year to come. But knowing that God is with us helps us to face the future with hope and confidence. I love the Psalms and pray them often, of course. Psalm 18 talks about all of the hardships that we have had in the past to overcome problems, difficulties, trials, and things that we imagine that will come in the future. But toward the end, I love this line. It says this, with my God, I can scale any wall. It's such a great affirmation of, of confidence, you know. Yes, things have happened. Things will happen. But because God is with us, we shall not be afraid. We shall be confident. With my God, I can scale any wall. So that is the examine. We can do this, as I said, daily. Some people like to do this in the middle of the day. Some people like to do this before they go to bed, just to kind of go through those five steps or something like that, you know, every day. It helps to frame our life. We're not just robots going through life unaware. By examining our day or our year or our lives, we can become more conscious of God's divine, loving presence, and we can be converted and grow in his grace. Be not afraid. Christ is the same yesterday, today, and always. Do not worry about tomorrow, says the Lord. Today has its own challenges. Let us try to live always in the presence of God as disciples who learn and apostles who share the good news. I'll close with the simple words of one of the former United Nations general secretaries, Dag Hammarskjöld. I heard these this quote when I was in a philosophy course in the seminary, and I've never forgotten them. Very simple, but they're words truly to live by. And I think it's very appropriate as we make this transition from last year to a new calendar year. Here's the quote. It's very simple. It's more of a prayer. For all that has been, thank you. For all that will be, yes. Well, everybody, if you've never heard of that before, that is St. Ignatius's, Saint, Saint Ignatius's uh, abbreviated form of his examination of conscious consciousness <laughs> as we're uh, we grow up as Catholics and we hear about the examination of conscience which we're kind of looking upon our sins as Bishop mentioned but it's a great spiritual practice that everybody I've ever met in my life who's serious about growing uh, incrementally consistently mm-hmm. they, they adopt some kind of form of this practice and um, of reviewing their day reviewing their um, 30 days or even years something like that but constantly having a, an attitude of self-reflection and uh Every time, as Bishop was talking, Suzanne, it reminded me of that quote that is famous. Maybe it's Plato, maybe it's Socrates, maybe it's Eric. one of the Greek philosophers, the unexamined life mm-hmm. is not worth living. Mm-hmm. And um, we were kind of chatting, and you mentioned in your, in your long military career, um, a practice that you adopted with, I guess, pretty pretty consistently. Yes. Looking at yourself at the end of a day, in mm-hmm. especially in an environment which can be high stress and high pressure, High performance required in the military, and and looking to seek to to be more excellent, be better at your job, be better at your vocation. Mm-hmm. Um, so talk to us through like what that was like and the the effect that it had on you, both positively and negatively, and maybe we can grow out from there and on, on go more deeply into that. Yeah, thank you for asking. So yeah, I mean, at the end of every day, I would kind of do a mental review of what happened. You know, what events happened, what I said, um, what I wanted to say, what I didn't say, how could I do better, how can I grow? You know, as a leader, you're always evolving. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, who you were in your 20s is 
different than who you are in your 40s, and a lot of that has to deal with um, people you come in contact with, situations that you encounter. And so I think to be truly an effective leader, you have to do some sort of an exam, self-examination because that's how you get better. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, And a lot of positive things can come out of that, obviously. Um, but there's also a negative side to it, too. Yeah. Um, and we talked about this a little bit as well. So you know, if you dwell a little bit too much on what you said or what you didn't say or how you affected somebody or some situation, um, I think you got to realize that sometimes you just got to, the past is the past. You got to leave it behind and look forward to the future and, um, you know, just grow and do better um, as you move forward. So, yeah, I, as you were talking, I was reflecting on something recently where I where I was with um, a couple doing marriage preparation and doing the opening prayer and I swore I I, I mispred I, I got the the bride's name wrong <laughs> and, and uh, it's just if you've ever been in a group prayer situation somebody mispronounces somebody's name or says the wrong name it's it's double the awkward because everyone's mm-hmm. eyes are closed and everyone's trying to maintain and I and it, I beat myself up about that for like the next 16 hours especially laying down my head on the pillow and mm-hmm. we've all this every every single person has had those moments they lay their head on the pillow and it's just like why did I do that? Why did I say that? You know, Mm -hmm. and it's not fruitful, you know, and even if it's done in a way sometimes that you talk about where you you consistently do it for a purpose, um, if you're not inviting God into it, and that's kind of the Christian difference, that's that's the Mm -hmm. whole point of what Bishop Bill was saying, and um, there's a difference between reviewing your life alone and Mm -hmm. putting it all on yourself to get better and to beat yourself up over it and to not forgive yourself or, you know, Hold yourself, hold yourself accountable, and then there's then there's a the Christian perspective where you you can be alone, but you're never ever ever truly alone. And in fact, those moments where you present yourself before God can be the most communal, communion building times of prayer. If you present yourself like Lord, I have no judge but you. I have no, um, you're the author of my life. You know me more intimately than I know myself. Show myself to myself. Reveal myself uh, to me by your Holy Spirit. And then those moments can be beautiful and they can be life-giving and and and, uh, and and move towards something positive so I mean for everyone out there listening if you're thinking about 2022 and your New Year's resolutions do you have any yet Suzanne any New Year's I don't actually me but, neither uh, yeah Fe- February 1st will come up with there you go <laughs> but it's an opportunity at this time of year for the Christian to just look and be like God what do you want my next year to look like what what in, in your opinion what did my 2022 look like where um, where have you been? Where have you not been? Where am I missing you? Um, and and it's just a great time. You know, the church believes in a calendar. We have a slightly different calendar, <laughs> but uh, but we believe in, as Bishop said, the sanctification of time. So give your time, give the next year over to the Lord, uh, and let Him do what He wills with it. Um, so yeah, and you were mentioning, you know, that's kind of the the point of the Our Fathers. You just kind of. Asking yeah. God, your will be done day by exactly. day. Exactly, exactly, yeah. I know, we so often want to control things, yeah. and we have to realize that we are not the ones in control. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's okay, and come to peace with that. Um, you know, this last year has just been incredible for me, um, being able to sit next to you it's and uh, co-host this podcast. It's something I never thought I would actually do, and when <laughs> Charmaine asked uh I uh, I couldn't say no, and right. it really has been a pleasure. And all the people that we've met, and I just want to give a shout out to Derek too, who's behind the camera. I know you don't see him very often, but you do hear his voice at every podcast. Um, but Derek has just been incredible, and uh, we couldn't do any of this without you. So thank you very very much for everything. So yeah, this podcast is such a blessing. I hope it's a blessing to you, and uh, we will see you in a couple weeks time. On the other side of the calendar year, we hope you have a blessed season of, of Christmas, Happy New Year, and we'll be back with an amazing episode oh, to yes. start the year. Uh, Bishop Bill is being joined by Archbishop Rody, our neighbor from over in Mobile. They're going to talk about their lives as bishops, but also kind of the history of our two dioceses, how they've been intertwined over the course of hundreds of years. Uh, it's an amazing episode. We can't wait for you to join us, and we'll see you then. Thank you for tuning in today to the Gaudium et Spes podcast. If you would like to know more about our podcast, 
please visit gaudiumetspes.net or go to ptdiocese.org and click the button that says podcast. If you listen to the audio version from an app such as iTunes, Stitcher, or Spotify, be sure and rate, review, and comment. If you watched us on YouTube, make sure you like and subscribe or leave us a comment there as well. Thank you for joining us.